It's been played starting all the way back in 1901. This is on Thanksgiving night. I know Thanksgiving is normally dominated by the NFL, but this is a remarkable rivalry game. It's for the Golden Egg Trophy. Yes, we're talking about the Egg Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. Old Miss traveling to Mississippi State. It's not the same without the Pirate, I'll say that much. But right now, Old Miss is an 11-point favorite at time of record. That spread has gone back and forth between 11.5 down to 10.5 as well. Over under set at 55 points. Fresh, who you got going for Old Miss, Mississippi State? The Bulldogs got any chance in this one? Well, first off, I just love the Egg Bowl. It's that one that's kind of, everyone sort of like puts on the side. It's not, doesn't have the Iron Bowl or the Civil War or, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, you know, old, clean, old fashioned hate, Florida, Florida State. It's kind of the other one sort of tucked away, but it means so much to everyone there in the state of Mississippi. And actually, it has had some of the craziest game, craziest endings, very fluky back and forth where you have the gritty fan base of Mississippi State down there and, you know, shaking the cowbells and then the hotty toddies up there in the Grove and, and Ole Miss. It's complete, you know, culture clash when it comes to this rivalry and it actually makes it even that much better and really just lasts forever. And you kind of look at it, Mississippi State has actually always been that one team that's been there is lurking around. And they pulled off some of the craziest upsets in this game. They're usually it's always favored, usually for Ole Miss, but Mississippi State's pulled off some of the better ones over time. And you kind of go back in the annals. 1999, the Bulldogs were down 20-6 to in the fourth quarter. They eventually somehow tied the football game at 20-all. And with seconds remaining, Ole Miss decides to run a play instead of taking it to overtime. The pass was then picked off. And Mississippi State gets in field position, kicks a game-winning field goal, and wins the ball game. Or in 2007, Again, Bulldogs are down 14 nothing, less than eight to go in the fourth quarter. Under Ed Orgeron, the Rebels decide to go for it on fourth down, trying to ice the ball game. They get stuffed. Somehow that gives the Bulldogs a massive you know, bullsh- burst of energy, and that propels them to a 17-14 win there in the fourth quarter. 2013, the first actual you know, um, real showdown here that it actually went to overtime. Bulldogs are down 10-7. Jack Prescott's all banged up, is out of the game, comes back in, leads Mississippi State down on the field, kicks a game-time field goal right as the you know, clock hits zero, and then in overtime on fourth down, punches it in for the game-winning touchdown, take out Ole Miss. And then last year, the last game with the Pirate, you know, it's very, you, we didn't know it at the time when it happened, but Ole Miss drives down the field, scores a touchdown, down two, going for a two-point conversion, and Mississippi State Bulldogs stuff them deny them the opportunity, and pull out the victory 24-22. It was the Pirates' actually last game, which is really a much more meaningful where we are a year from, you know, a year from that. But just shows the, the anything can happen in these kind of games. Craziness can ensue. Memories last forever. And you, it, it doesn't matter what your record is when it comes to rivalries. You lay it all on the line for that one game. Because if you win this one game, bragging rights for a year, you might be 1-11, but you still beat your rival, especially if you upset them or keep them from a bowl game. It really adds up being more. And you also, sometimes outside of these, you know, crazy upsets, you have some just crazy endings. So in 1983, it was a legendary ending. If you have film and you can look it up on YouTube or listen to a radio call for the Mississippi State radio broadcast, Mississippi State is driving down the field. They are trying to kick a field goal to, to finally beat Ole Miss. The ball is kicked. It's 27 yards out. The ball is in the air. It's fluttering. And right when it's about to pass the, the uprights, a 40-mile-an-hour gust of wind comes. The ball literally levitates in front of the um, uprights and then drops down, hits the ground, does not cross the goal on the uprights, does not go through. They don't get the points. Ball game over. Ole Miss somehow wins. And everybody's just sort of looking at, like, the ball just froze in the middle there and hit the ground. Craziness happens. Mississippi State fans that were alive at that game swear there was some you know, shady stuff going on from Ole Miss. They paid for air vents or something like that coming in. That's just the conspiracy effort in that ball game. But that's what a rivalry does to you. It sort of sticks with you forever. Um, you know, bringing it fast forward to now, you kind of had that same kind of feel. Mississippi State backed up against the wall. They've had some troubles this year. Definitely we're not what we expected. Will Rogers is coming in. They put in a different offense. He got banged up a little bit. Zach Arnett obviously got fired. Um, you know, where's Mississippi State going with this, you know, return how are they going to get back to normal and Ole Miss under lane train rolling through going to probably go to a New Year's Six bowl game only to you know have a loss to uh, Alabama and a loss to Georgia but other than that they've been done pretty dang good you know they're the high and mighty what does Mississippi State at home have for them that's kind of feel I have where some craziness is probably going to ensue in this football game and on top of it 
just like last year, Lane Train and rumors now, does he go to Texas A&M? Does he take another opening somewhere else? His name could be Flutter. Is he dedicated to Ole Miss? We don't know. And, you know, it's always money talk. So you have that hanging over this football game. Could this be Lane Kiffin's fat last football game as a head coach at Ole Miss? Or does he you know, win and keep moving forward? What other little things from the outside sort of add to this you know, narrative coming into this game in Starkville on, on Thursday night? They did get some good news. Ole Miss did. Jackson Dart declared he's coming back next year. So that gives them some stability at the quarterback position going forward. I think that will help ease some stress and allow them to continue to develop this offense moving up. Um, all, all, Ole Miss's offense, outside of you know their games against Georgia and, and Alabama, they've been loading up on people. They've been dominating. Right now, they're third overall offense in the SEC, fourth best passing attack, sixth best rushing attack in the conference. And they scored at least 27 points in every game except for those two losses to Georgia and Alabama. So they're putting points on the board, and they're doing it. Kayshawn Judkins, a host of receivers, they're moving the ball up and down, left and right, whatever they want to do. When they're playing average to lesser opponents, um, they haven't been able to do it against elite defenses, but anywhere else they've been able to take care of business and put up points. And I think that right there is going to really show this Mississippi State's defense rise to the occasion. And they dig deep and put it all on the line for one football game. They are playing for bowl eligibility. If they can get one here, that puts them in a bowl game. And you know what? If they beat Ole Miss, they probably keep it from a New Year's Six. So, again, taking that jab at your rival and trying to get it done. Mississippi State's defense, though, they have a tall task. They do have the two leading tacklers in the conference, Jet Johnson with 117 tackles and Nathaniel Watson with 116. So if those two guys are going to have to be called upon to really become true leaders, wrapping up that running game, getting after Dart, covering in the passing lanes, and preventing drives from being extended by Ole Miss. If they can continue their dominant effort on, on the defensive side of the football, maybe pop a turnover here and there, it keeps them in the ball game. Their offense right now, Will Rogers came back last week. Will he be able to get some of that going offensively, put some points on the board? But defense, they're going to have to keep, you know, the Ole Miss Rebs under control for a little bit. You know, um, Watson also, from the passing situation, leads the conference in sacks um, with 10. So if he can get after the quarterback, get after Dart, maybe cause some havoc, cause some turnovers, keep them in the football game, feed off the crowd there on Thursday night, it'll lead something. The defense is going to have to show up and allow that offense under Will Rogers to get humming again after a long sort of up-and-down season they've had on that side of the ball. Both these defenses have been middle of the road, really, in the SEC. So it's really going to be a tall task of which of them actually steps up and gets it done. It's going to come down to the ground game, though. Which team can dominate and which team can shut down the run game? If they can, get off the field quicker, maintain the drives, and help themselves out. Turnovers are the name of the game in any kind of, any kind of rivalry situation. Which team will protect the football better in, in this environment on Thursday night? That's where it's going to come down to get the dub. Um, as much as I want to take Mississippi State and I want to go with the home crowd, or literally the underdog in this situation, there's just too much talent on Ole Miss's team. Um, the Zach Arnett hire, I, you know, it was good at the moment. He took it in there, got a bowl win. You know, was working as a DC under on, under the Pirate there for a while. My coach Mike Leach, um, but I think he's earned he, the tall. The task was too tall for him to keep this team organized. Too many injuries to sustain, and I think right now they're just sort of grass met straws. Need to hit a reset. Um, I think Ole Miss finds a way to get it done. I think they win by ten. They do not cover the spread. I think Mississippi State gives them enough of a fight on Thursday night. Especially the home crowd adds a little extra to it. They will escape Starkville, but the old Red Miss Rebs will take care of business and win the game, but they will not cover. Fresh, uh, this is an interesting one for me. This is one of those weird games, just like you were saying. This is a, one of the rivalry games, and I, I hate the talk of it's a rivalry game. Throw the records out. Like I, I legitimately my my skin curdles. Every time I hear someone say that, because it, it is kind of, again, it's just the same thing as, well, you know, if your star player gets hurt, well, it's next man up. You know, it's, it's disrespectful to what that person's accomplished or what that team's accomplished there as well. And this is one of those games, though, that as much as I hate that saying, it, it kind of rings true because neither one of these teams, neither one of these programs is ever really like, a dominant world beater type of program. Like each one of these teams has very big flaws. The thing that makes me most curious is Rashawn Judkins. I love this kid. I love this kid coming into the season. He was a unanimous first team all American from us. And all of a sudden we've seen his rushing yards go down almost a full yard this year. He's not as explosive for some reason. Now that could be a variety of things. He has he he's only two touchdowns less than what he did last year. He's still got this game to play and still got 
a bowl game to play in. But it just seems like when I'm watching him, two years ago, he jumped off the screen. He's like, man, I, I looked at him. I was like, that's one of the best running backs in the entire country. And and he's not jumping off the screen anymore. I, I don't know if that's scouting or what have you. Same thing with Mississippi State. Will Rogers at times last year, again, I know he had a different offensive uh, play caller last year in the Pirate. He jumped off the screen in his ability. And I really enjoyed watching him. But the real thing with Mississippi State, I think the reason that Mississippi State's got a chance in this game, and you kind of alluded to it, is the two linebackers. The fact that they are the two lean tacklers in the SEC, they have 16 sacks in between the two of them. They force, they have four interceptions. They've forced four fumbles combined. These two guys are wrecking balls. And that's the one thing that if I'm looking at this, if I'm talking to a Mississippi State fan, I'm saying, listen, you're going to need to keep this game ugly and sloppy. Last year, if I correct me if I'm wrong, it was a pouring rain type of game, if I remember right. That's you kind of need that type of game today on Thursday. I don't know right now, like it's saying that the weather's supposed to be 60 degrees and clear as of, we're recording this, but I would really love to see like it just to become like a sloppy type of game. I think that that's what Mississippi State needs. Mississippi State right now is minus two in the turnover um, differential. Old Miss is at plus nine. That's going to be a big thing. Neither one of these teams are like a huge ball control type of offense. Both of them are under 30 minutes a game in time of possession there. So that's going to be the conversation I'm going to have. Can Jackson Dart, Quashad Jud- Judkins, can they, can they hold on to the football? Can they prevent like the stupid play? Can they prevent giving Mississippi State a short field? And are they able to hold the time of possession over 30 minutes in the football game? If they're able to do those two things, they're going to win the Egg Bowl. If not, though, if Mississippi State gets a couple of turnovers, if they're constantly getting after Jackson Dart, putting him behind the sticks, guess what? I think this game is going to get ugly real fast, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I think that it could be just as bad as, as last year for Lane Train and Old Miss. I don't know, Fresh. I really, I'm like you. I really want a reason to pick Mississippi State. And if it's just in the honor of the Pirate, if it's the fact that I, you know, I think Lane Kiffin is kind of a fraud. You know, every year he's got these great teams and all of the talent. But like you said, when he plays lesser or equal competition, they play pretty well. But anytime they go up against the big boys, that they get their lunch handed to them. So. If I'm if I'm in that Mississippi State locker room fresh, I'm using this. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna quote the Sandlot to the kids. Remember, kids, they're heroes and they're legends. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. Follow your heart and you never go wrong. That's what I'm saying to Mississippi State on the way out into the field. There, I don't know if that's gonna do anything. I'm with you. Give me Old Miss to win this. I think they're gonna get some revenge. I think that. You know, if, unless they really lose the turnover battle by minus two, I, I think that they're going to do just enough to win. That 11 points, I don't like that at all, though. So I'll take Mississippi in the points. Mississippi State in the points. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be that classic battle. But if Mississippi State can get some turnovers early and keep momentum, I think it does a lot. So Ole Miss, you're going to come out fired up, you know, ready to go emotionally from the very beginning of the football game. And, um, don't be surprised if Mississippi State throws a little trick plays in there. Take some chances because you know what? If you win, you go to a bowl game. If you lose, season's over. you got nothing else to worry about. So take some chances. Be a little aggressive. Um, it, it, go out there and, and try to take the victory. You have the home crowd behind you. If you play competitive and you keep it tight, they'll be there the entire night. 